Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and today I have another speed reviews video. So this is where I go through all the makeup that I have been testing over the last month or so and try and give you the quickest review possible. Alright, let's start strong with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. Now this finally released in Australia and I did do a full review on it if you want to see a bigger, better breakdown. Overall, I do like the product. If you want that glowy base, it is beautiful for that it also works really well as a highlighter if you have textured skin or are prone to breakouts like myself I think it's best that you are strategic where you place it and not put it all over I can't wear it on its own because all it does is emphasize my texture and my pores and then one of the biggest issues with this product was the shade so I got the lighter shade of course called fair one and it swatches so dark once you blend it out on your face it's okay but wearing it on its own it is just way too deep like to call that the fairest shade Mm, I don't think so. Any reviews I have on the products I mentioned today or videos where I've used these products, I will link them all down in the description box for you. Next, I have the Mud Makeup Flawless Finish Foundation and I cannot get enough of this. It has a beautiful, lightweight, medium coverage. It leaves your skin looking so natural. And what surprised me the most is how freaking long lasting this is. Like this will go your 10 hours without breaking up. It is like mind blowing to me, especially because it's only around $6. Now, unfortunately, this shade range is pretty crap. There's only like six shades. So I'm a bit iffy recommending it because of that, but I just can't stop using it. Like it's a good foundation. They really need to expand on it. Next is the W7 Oso oh Sensitive Concealer and I have it in the shade LW5. Now I picked this one up because I saw it all over TikTok and they were right. This is a really beautiful concealer. It's super creamy, but it's lightweight. It's going to give you that like medium to high coverage. It blends out seamlessly. It doesn't extremely settle into fine lines at all. And I say it doesn't extremely settle into fine lines because every concealer I use somewhat settles into my fine lines. So this one only settles like a little bit. <laughs> I don't need to set it with powder. It looks absolutely flawless. It is so long lasting and just looks really smoothing and hydrating under the eyes. Another concealer I've been trying is the Enco Beauty Instant Erase Concealer and I have the shade Ivory. Now this one is quite similar to the W7 in the fact that it's got that medium to high coverage. It's really smooth, creamy, doesn't settle that much under the eyes. The only difference I find is that it's a bit of a thicker formula. As you can see in the overlays, I did apply one concealer to each eye and now looking at them, I cannot tell the difference between the two. They both apply very similarly. I, I never know if that's a word every time I go to say that. Similarly. You know what I mean. <laughs> if I did have to pick one though, I would probably go with the W7 just because I like that more lightweight texture under the eyes. One by Enco Beauty I wasn't really a fan of is the Miracle Hydra Glow Oil Free Foundation. And I got this in the shade Ivory. Now I first tested this out in a full face of Enco Beauty video and it just was not working for my skin type. It was patchy. It just wasn't blending. It was disastrous. I had to take it off. A lot of you did suggest applying it with my fingers instead. So I tried that in a vlog and again, it just didn't apply right. I just don't think this formula is suited for my skin type, which is combination. I'm a little oily throughout my T-zone, a little dry around breakouts. So I think that this might be best for oily skin. I don't know, it just wasn't for me. Next, I've got the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Brow Gel and this is a clear formula. Now, it's just kind of like your regular brow gel. I don't know, I feel like these days a lot of people are looking for that laminated look, that soap brows look, and this is just going to give you that regular brows are brushed up, they're staying in place. They look natural, they look fluffy kind of look. I do really like how it makes my brows look. I think that they look super natural and it does hold them up in place. It does give a little bit of a crispy finish, like it dries down a little crunchy, but I don't really mind that. So depending what you're looking for in a brow gel, if you do want something that's just a bit more natural, just gonna keep them in place, then I recommend this one. Next, I've got the Enco Beauty Brow Fill and Set Micro Crown and Tinted Gel. Now, I do really like the pencil side of this, but I've only been using it for like three weeks and not even every day. And 
it's run out. Like I've already used it up. The brow gel was nice. It is very tinted. I love the tiny little wand that it's got. Look at this. Like, come on, come on. So good for being precise. It does add a lot of like texture to the brows, which is really nice, but it's very tinted. So you do need to go in with just a little bit. I will continue to use the brow gel. It's just kind of annoying that literally within three weeks the pencil has run out. Next I've got the L'Oreal Volume Million Lashes Mascara in brown. I have been on the hunt for a new brown mascara ever since they discontinued my favorite L'Oreal Paradise. So I have been trying quite a few. I saw this one at Priceline and thought I would give it a go. The brown shade isn't really as chocolatey and rich and warm as what I'm looking for. And the overall formula of this mascara, it's nice, it separates the lashes, it gives them length, but it's just not giving me as much volume as I would like. So I'll use it, but... It's not really what I want. And then another mascara I've been trying is the Mud Makeup Volume and Fiber Extension Mascara. Now this one is going to give you volume. It adds so much thickness to my lashes. They look so freaking good and it is so affordable as well. Again, I applied one mascara to each eye so that you can see the difference between the two. And with the Mud Makeup, you can just see how much more volumized my lashes look. The only thing about the Mud Mascara that I don't like is that it is not waterproof in the slightest. Like if you get a little tear in your eye or like your eyes water for whatever reason, it's going to leak. Leak? It's going to, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say. Smudge? Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Look, you've got to forgive me, okay? I am 38 weeks and five days. I'm so out of breath. Baby brain's in full force. <laughs> Next, I've got a few eyeshadows, starting with the e.l.f. No Budge Cream Shadow, and I got this in the shade Sand Dune. Now, first of all, I love the color of this. It's a really beautiful, cool tone brown, which I just, it's my go-to for everyday, like minimal kind of makeup. Now, when they say no budge with this formula, they really mean no budge. When you first apply it, it is quite creamy and it does blend out well, but you've got to move fast because once that dries down, it is not going anywhere. I would prefer it if it was a bit more creamy and you had a little bit longer because I do find with this product as well, it looks better if you lightly build it up. Whereas if you go in with a heavy amount of product, it just doesn't blend as nicely into the crease. It can look a little bit patchy because like you're trying to blend fast before it dries like some bits dry and I don't know so I like it but I probably wouldn't 100% recommend it if you do want a cream eyeshadow I've really been loving this one by Mecca Maxima it is the zoom shadow stick in the shade taupe it's not as deep as the elf but it's a beautiful cool tone brown super creamy really really easy to work with an eyeshadow product i have been loving is this nyx glow shot and this is in the shade golden goji now this is a liquid eyeshadow it's not glittery it's more metallic but oh my god it is the most lightweight liquid eyeshadow i've ever used so here is what the shade looks like you can see it gives so much shine it's beautiful now this is a really easy formula to work with today i just applied a little bit in the center with a brush but if you do want that nice rich metallic effect you can go ahead and apply it on the lid and you've got time to work with it to blend it out before it dries down it is so lightweight that it feels like water on your eyelids it's a really nice formula you know how some metallic liquid eyeshadows can feel really heavy they feel crusty you, like once you try and build them up they just crease this is not like that at all it is so beautiful and they've got quite a good amount of shades in the range as well. And then some eyeshadow palettes I've been dipping into. First of all, I've got the Kind Color Theory eyeshadow palette in Golden Bronze. Now this isn't really a Golden Bronze color palette to me. Some of the shades are quite cool toned, which I personally like. Now the matte shades do blend really easily. They build nicely. They're good to work with. The shimmer shades are quite hard pressed, so it does take a little bit to get a metallic payoff and 
even then it's just not as metallic as I was hoping. I feel like with metallic shades they do need to be a bit more soft and creamy to really get that bold shimmer. But if you're not into the really bold look then this is a great everyday palette. I do think it's got a good mix of light to deep tones, mattes and shimmers so you can create quite a few looks out of it. Now the next palette I had quite high hopes for it's the Morphe Midnight June. And I thought that this might be a good alternative to the ColourPop That's Taupe palette, which can be a little bit tricky to get here in Australia. Now, I love all the shades in here. We've got a variety of mattes and shimmers, light to deep tones. It looks like a really good palette, but again, it's just... Nah. The mattes have good color payoff and they blend really easily, but unfortunately the color that they are in the pan doesn't quite translate as the same color once it's on the eye. Now I have done a few looks with this and I find that they all kind of just look gray, like it all blends into a gray. You can't really tell the difference between these browns with the deeper brown. It's yeah, they kind of all blend into one. And then these shimmers are shocking. Extremely hard pressed. You have to go in like so heavy with your brush. And even if I use um, like some finishing spray to get more of a shimmer out of them, it just doesn't quite work. They give a ton of fallout. I don't know, I was quite disappointed. I'm glad I didn't spend a lot of money on it, but it's just worth getting the ColourPop That's Taupe palette if you want a nice cool toned eyeshadow palette. And then lastly, I've got some lip products starting with the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Liquid Lipsticks. Oh my God, I just cannot rave about these enough. Seriously. So I picked up the two lighter shades in the range. This is Peachy, which is what I am wearing on my lips today. And this is the shade Cheeky. This is the most long lasting durable lipstick I have ever put on my lips. So they do dry down, but they still have a glossy finish, which kind of trips my mind out a bit. Like, how is that happening? <laughs> it is just such a great formula. It's really comfortable and feels lightweight on the lips. The only thing is that I wish there were some more lighter nudes within the shade range. Like, I do love this shade, but it's not what I would consider a nude for me. The good thing about the shade range having lots of deeper, like, pinky red tones, though, is that they are not going to move. So if you want to wear a bright red lipstick out to an event where you are going to be eating and drinking, you can rely on this formula that it's not going to move. It's not going to get all over your glass. You're not going to have lipstick on your face when you're eating. Like it is just amazing. I've never ever experienced a lipstick formula like this. And then lastly, I've got the Emco Beauty Pout Gloss in the shade Tickle. I have been loving this gloss. First of all, it smells like a watermelon. Oh my God, it's so good. The packaging is very Fenty-esque. Let me just put some on for you now and you can see how beautiful and glossy it is. It's a really comfortable gloss. It doesn't feel sticky and it's very long lasting as well. But again, I feel like I haven't been using it that much and I am flying through it like do you see how much has gone already? I don't know. But love the packaging, love the price, love the formula. All right, well, that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed watching it, please give it a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. When I'm uploading this, I'm not sure if baby will be here or not. I am trying to do a little bit of pre-filming, but let me show you my bump anyway. Here she is at 38 and five. I am really feeling that back pain lately. <laughs> can't believe that she will be here so soon. I will list and link the products down below in the description box as well as any videos that are related to this makeup. Thank you all so much for being here. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. You can also come and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.